Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech Town Info. I'm Scotty, my co-host Cletus, and this is episode number four of Eek! Uh, the electrical engineering class, more or less. Um, so, uh, in the last episode of Eek, uh, I covered three-phase power, um, three-phase alternating current, blah, blah, blah. You can watch that video first if you don't know much about it. Um, I'm going to take a little sidetrack in this one and talk about power factor because a uh, power factor is something you've probably noticed um, like if you're say buying like an LED light bulb or something it'll say either power factor or PF uh, 0 0.5 0 0.9 or you might see like computer power supplies and they talk about active and passive PFC power factor correction um, and this is kind of like something people have asked me about and it's not really terribly important to know what it is because it's not you know it's not like you know understanding DC versus AC and all that kind of stuff, but it comes up, so I figured I'd just do a quick little video uh, and give, hopefully, a very simple explanation of what it is. Um, right. So basically, power factor is the ratio between real power and apparent power. Um, what the heck does that mean? Uh, right. So what it means is that when the power company generates electricity, and it's three phase and it's alternating current and they're sending it over the power lines. Uh, and then it gets to the load, say your house, say a light bulb. And uh, these loads, whether it's a light bulb or your computer or whatever, whatever electrical gizmo you're running, um, has some inductance or capacitance associated with it usually, most often. Um, inductance, as from past videos I was talking about, when alternating current flows through, say, a coil of wire, uh, you get this expanding and collapsing magnetic field, and this doesn't happen instantaneously. Uh, so, uh, similarly, you have capacitors, which are basically just, it's, it's basically a relatively small component, but it's essentially two metal plates, and it can store a charge. And these are used to make things like filters and all kinds of stuff when you have alternating current. So. Um, Right, so because all the devices that are being powered by the alternating current from the power company, uh, because all these devices have some inductance and capacitance associated with them, because, the, like, for example, a motor is a very large inductive load, because a motor is basically like a, a, a giant coil of wire, right? Um, what that means is when you put alternating current in, uh, you're going to get, more or less, you're going to get a shift. Um, you get a shift in the, uh, oh, we're going to get complicated here. Okay, basically what happens is the voltage and current waveforms, your, your, your pretty sine waves, are, are basically, they should be in phase, right? They should be like, the tops of your sine waves should be overlapping. But because of this inductance, these, these, these coils and capacitors, inductance and capacitance, the, the current and voltage waveforms shift uh, relative to each other, more or less. Uh, so practically what this means is that um, if you have a gizmo with, say, a power factor of 0 0.7, that means that the apparent power is different from the real power. So if you, say, have um, a power factor, you have a gizmo and it's being powered by, via AC and the power factor is 0 0.7, what that means is that uh, the, the power company is actually going to have to send 1.4 times as much current over the wires to power that gizmo because it has a low power factor. The thing is that uh, if you have a purely resistive load, like say um, an incandescent light bulb, it's just a little coil inside a glass ball and electricity flows through it, it heats up, it glows, it emits light, it generates heat. That's not actually a power factor of exactly one, but uh, for, all, for our purposes we'll say it's a purely resistive load. And when you have a purely resistive load, i.e. there's no inductance or capacitance, there's no coil-like behavior and there's no capacitor-like behavior in your gizmo, uh, then your power factor is uh, 1.0 or very close to it. But anytime it's lower than that, then you get this shifting of waveforms, blah, 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 blah. It gets really complicated, so, right. Um, and essentially, the power company has to actually provide more power. They have to actually generate more electricity than your gizmo is actually consuming. So, like I said, if you have a gizmo with, if you have a computer power supply and it has a, pack, a power factor of 0 0.7, what that means is that it's going to consume 
up to 1.4 times as much current, which means say your computer's power supply is is uh, consuming um, a thousand watts. That's a lot. That it's your it's just a nice round number. Uh, we'll say 100 watts. It's a laptop. Um, <laughs> it's consuming 100 watts. Uh, the power company is actually going to have to generate 1.4 times that, essentially, in order to send that power over the power lines. Now, your actual device is only going to use 100 watts, but the power company is generating this extra power to send it over the lines because there are losses and your, your sine waves get imbalanced and everything gets kind of unbalanced and screwed up. Well, <clears throat> but hang on a minute here, because when your gizmo is using 100 watts, you are only being billed for that 100 watts. Your little your little power meter is using, it says, oh, he's using 100 watts, let's bill him for X number of kilowatt hours, whatever. But the power company is still having to generate more power than that 100 watts, and they're having to send that electricity over the high the high tension power lines, and so there are, there are more losses, and of course this costs money. Okay, so a couple other little things here. Um, as I said, most gizmos do not have a power factor of one. Um, compact fluorescent light bulbs are actually especially bad because, um, okay, granted they're using like six times less power than an incandescent light bulb, let's say, but there is kind of an issue there because a compact fluorescent light bulb has a ballast in it, and a ballast is like an inductive load, and there's they throw in some capacitors for this and that and the other thing, and so you have a you have a you have a gizmo that has a power factor less than one. So even though your your energy efficient compact fluorescent light bulb is using far less than 100 watts, let's say it's only using 20 watts, the power company is having to generate more than that 20 watts. So you're still saving energy, but then sometimes people go, oh well, if I'm saving so much energy, I can use you know five times as many light bulbs. Well, then that's not so good. And of course, the more people that use these these unbalanced these these devices with power factors less than one, the more added power the power company has to generate. So if everything was purely resistive, they wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, power companies actually compensate for this. Um, they have like giant capacitor banks they can switch in and out, and there's all kinds of fun stuff. Um, if you are a, uh, say, a, a corporation and you have manufacturing equipment and you have lots of giant motors running, oftentimes if you're a commercial entity and you're going to be sucking lots of power and you have um, devices with, with very low power factor, um, the power company will actually charge you for that. Uh, if you're a home user, they don't, usually. Um, also, I mentioned power factor correction in, in computer power supplies. If you have to buy a new power supply or you buy a computer and you see that um, the power supply says it's like guaranteed, like, you know, 80 plus or 90 plus, or they, you know, call it 80, 80 plus gold and you know, all this other stuff, that's basically, um, there is power factor correction which is essentially, there's, there's a couple different ways of doing it. There's, there's passive power factor correction, which is um, almost, it's just basically like a filter, essentially, that tries to, co to compensate. And then there's active power factor correction, which is a fancy circuit inside your power supply that essentially, you can think of it like it looks at the load that your power supply is placing on the power lines, and it compensates for the extra inductance and capacitance so that it gets that power factor up to as close to as close to one as possible, so that this means there's less strain on the power grid. The power company doesn't have to generate as much juice. Blah blah blah. Um, right. So that's kind of it. Um, like I said, it's a little bit sort of like airy fairy, and it's it's not something you you really need to be terribly concerned about on a daily basis. But it is kind of important because um, it's it's you know when you're using X number of watts. Uh, you're paying for the actual <clears throat> the actual uh, power that you're using, but still the power company they're not generating that exact amount of power for you to use. They're generating that amount of power plus a whole bunch more because of the this these coils and capacitors, inductances and capacitances in the loads that they're driving. So, um, in short, power factor less than one means that power companies have to generate more actual power to give you X number of watts when you're using your stuff. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, for more Techie Tips, see Scotty's Tech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.